This is my second end of three, and the first one was modified quite a lot. But the question is second time round, what will I do the same and what will I do differently? Previously, I made two popular videos on 3D printed mods that you could do for free to upgrade your Ender 3. Now, while it's under review, I try to use a printer as stock as possible, and some mods I definitely missed, and other ones, not so much. So in this video, we're gonna revisit this. I'm gonna go through the list and tell you what I'm gonna print again and what I'm not gonna bother with. Now, some of these will be different because this is an Ender 3 Pro, so some of the problems have either been changed or fixed with different updates, and I'll let you know what those are along the way. Here's the list, and the first thing I did last time was a fan guard, and this is one of the ones that you don't need on an Ender 3 Pro at least, and that's because they moved the electronics cover to the bottom of the printer. Previously, it used to face upwards, and it was prone to debris and other things falling into the fan and clogging it. This time around, we don't need to worry with this printer. The next thing I printed was a Z motor stepper spacer, and once again, the design has been updated on Ender 3, so this is no longer needed. The bracket with which it's mounted now uses two screws that go into the extrusion and you can loosen those off and use it to angle the stepper motor and the lead screw towards the top axis and that's what I did when I was assembling it to get everything true. I'm sure you can forgive me for not disassembling that to show you because everything is currently lined up perfectly. The next mod is this one here and I think this one is definitely a keeper. It's an LCD cover for the back of the LCD screen here. From factory the way it comes, everything is exposed at the back, so I think it's still a nice idea to fit this one and let's do it real quick. We're going to start by removing the two screws on the front of the LCD panel. They'll come off nice and quick and that will let us remove the LCD. I did a test fit just to make sure everything was going to line up. I printed the version with the cutout for the buzzer, there are multiple variants depending on what you want to do. Unscrew the four bolts that hold the LCD onto the panel and then put your plastic cover in place once again and you will need to use longer screws because the old ones will no longer reach. Be gentle as you screw them in, you don't want to snap the long 3D printed parts but working them down one at a time, they'll bite nicely, there'll be no wobble on the back and then you're ready to put on the front case, good idea to power it on to make sure that nothing has been worked loose. So as you saw then, bolts that we need to secure this printer part to the back were not long enough. They are M3 by 6 and what I used to secure them was this pack. This is a really cheap pack of M3, M4 and M5 different nuts and bolts. And what I used was an M3 by 8 down the bottom and an M3 by 12 up the top. That was a perfect length. I'll have the link for something just like this in the description. It's a really handy thing to have if you own a 3D printer. The next thing I printed was a two-part filament guide. Firstly, I had a long one that snapped into the end here and it had the filament coming out to have a little bit more of a curve instead of coming straight down. I haven't really bothered with that this time. I found that I kept on knocking it, which was my fault, but ultimately bits were snapping. So what I've done instead was take out the bolts and move this as far as I can over to the side to try and alleviate that angle. I don't think it's a massive issue. This one down the bottom, however, is a big deal and worth fixing. So last time I printed one that clipped on, but as a lot of people commented, it likes to unclip itself. In the spirit of keeping it simple, I have this replacement here. Installation couldn't be easier. Two bolts to remove, that's it. Let's get it on the printer. The two bolts that we need to undo are on top of the nut that the Z lead screw goes through. See all that grease there? That's what we're trying to keep out of our filament from now on. Don't lose that little washer. It's vital for keeping the thing together when vibration set in. The new part slides straight in. We reinsert the two bolts and now the filament, when inserted, rubs on the plastic and can't touch the grease anymore. Grease-free filament, I think that's very worthwhile and it's worth mentioning there are a bunch of different solutions to this problem on Thingiverse. Some fancy ones with filament bearings, other ones simpler like this. I've had this one on for a little while now. I've taken it off to film this and it seems to work quite well. Another thing I printed was a Pets Bang fan shroud to replace the one that only blows from one side. And I'm not gonna fit one of those this time. I'm gonna experiment with something different and that is a bullseye. However, I am going to save that for its own video where I can test before and after and see if it's actually worthwhile as an upgrade. Now the original Ender 3 with its electronics board the other way round has the SD card and a micro SD card slot I might add right down the bottom. This Pro has it a little bit higher up. Previously I printed an adapter to use a full size SD card. On this one I don't really think it's worthwhile. Firstly because the SD card is now higher up, it's easier to align and not bump your hands on the table. Secondly because I mainly use Octoprint with a Raspberry Pi so the SD card is not really in use. 
Still recommend it, I'm just not personally going to do it in this instance. Now I experimented with damping feet in one of the other videos, but I didn't really like it back then and that's because I already had stepper motor dampers on and yes, I have fitted them to this. Now since I made my video on that exact process, the Ender 3 was updated at the back and there were no longer a bolt on replacement. Now there are two solutions to this. Some people would grind out some metal from the frame, which I wouldn't really be keen on doing. Other people got on Thingiverse and got searching and found some different adapters and things like that. I can tell you on the Ender 3 Pro that the one for the X axis goes on with zero troubles at all. And for the Y, it still goes on fine. The only thing that fouls it is the bed leveling wheel. So I took that out to my garage and I ground it down just a little bit and now everything clears and the printer is much, much quieter. So I still strongly recommend stepper motor dampers and the link to those is in the description. Previously, I printed a tool tray that went in here and I didn't use it all the time, but if I was disassembling something, it was really ideal for storing little screws and things. So I didn't knock them off the table, which I have a habit of doing far too often. I'm not gonna do it this time around because I'm putting something else in that space, which I'm gonna do last. The anti-snag cap. I put that on the rear of the printer to stop this cable that goes up to the X stepper motor and the extruder from snagging on the printer. To be honest, I don't think this was the best solution. I ended up taking it off and fitting something else before that printer went to its new owner. And that part is this one here. It's very simple. All you need are two M3 by 10 millimeter bolts. So let's go through that process. So the problem we're trying to fix is the possibility of one set of wires overlapping the other and then snagging on the back. We need two M3 by 10 millimeter bolts. I printed the mirrored version, either one will work. After you've bolted it in, you simply slide the cables through and from now on, every time they wiggle, they'll be held out of the way of the bed and it should be impossible to tangle. It just works really well. Sometimes the simplest solution is the best one. Now the Ender 3 Pro differs from the Ender 3 in that it's got a fatter extrusion on the front here and previously I printed a cover for the normal Ender 3 that clipped into place to cover this but on this one it's not going to fit, you don't really need to worry about it. It goes the whole way across the front so it's not really an issue. The link will be in the description below if you still want to check out the original one for the Ender 3 non-pro edition. Now one thing that I have really really missed since having this printer and having it stock is an extruder wheel. So I've printed the same one again. This is probably the easiest thing to install here. It's purposely designed to be quite tight. All we need to do is come over to the printer and push it down into place. Now before I cover my last printed mod, I'd like to address the Bowden tube. And I've previously made a video covering how to fit this Capricorn tube. So I've got some left over, I'm gonna fit that now. And before I started filming, I heated up the hot end and removed my X3D filament out of it, ready for this process. There's a good chance that your factory fitting is seized, which means you're gonna have to remove it to get out the tube, even if you're only changing the tube and not the fitting. You can see mine is a little bit marked on the inside and therefore it was stuck. After this, we're gonna cut the cable ties and then we can unscrew the one at the extruder end. You need to cut your bit of Capricorn tube to length. The wrong way to cut it is with side cutters, it will crush it. The right way is to use a sharp blade and gently push down. That should leave it pretty round. If you wanted to see the Capricorn tube cutter in action, here it is. It also does a tremendous job leaving it perfectly round as well. Reinstallation is pretty straightforward. Put your fittings in, make sure the tube is pushed the whole way into either end. Otherwise you'll have little gaps. The filament will bulge and you'll get jams. After everything is definitely in place, you can reapply the two cable ties and your work here is done. Well, looking at my list, there's only one thing left that I printed last time and that was a case for my Raspberry Pi. Now this time I've got what I consider a tidier one and it's going to mount where the drawer used to be and it's gonna cover this cable here on this inside section right there. So we need to remove these two screws once again, mount the Pi inside and then slide it into place. Should be super tidy. Last time I had it hanging out the back of the machine, which added to the footprint and made it harder to fit on a table or bench. Now the Pi snaps into place on this bottom piece and there is room for everything to be accessed. I had to push it pretty hard to get it to fit into place. It was a pretty tight fit. I was really hoping to use the original M3 by six bolts from the back of the LCD, but I had to use M3 by 12 to reach. There's room for everything to plug in the top and you've got two options. You can put it in the bottom extrusion, but I was worried it was gonna rub on the table and block the cooling vents underneath. So I opted for the upper layer. It still has plenty of room to clear the bed. The power cable is now more discreet and can run to the back of the printer and we can plug in our camera and USB connection to the printer and everything is really tidy. 
Well, that's a lot tidier, especially compared to having it just sitting on the table like I had it before. And that concludes my list. These are all the best mods, in my opinion, that are either free or cheap for the end of three. Now, if you're a beginner and you're stuck and you can't even get to these steps, I've got a video coming for you. We're gonna look at the basics such as getting the first layer correct, leveling the bed, making sure all of the carriages are on tight but not too tight, all of those type of things. We're also gonna explore manual mesh bed leveling, which is a way to do it without a BL touch, which means free, or you need to do some firmware changes. We're also gonna explore this bullseye fan duct with some proper before and after testing to see if it's actually worthwhile compared to the stock setup. That's all still to come. Make sure you hit subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Make sure you also comment down below if there's anything that I've missed that's great for bang for buck. Generally, my comment section is way above the average standard on YouTube, so I'm very appreciative of that, and it's worth scrolling through and having a look at the suggestions of others. Thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.